All righty. So doing a quick check to make sure it's showing up on my page. And I believe there we are. Okay. Hi, Brad. Hey, Sarah, how are you? I'm great. So um, I just want to introduce myself. How about that? I think that would be and awesome. Then... I'm sure everybody knows you, but we should introduce you too. So, oh, I'm I'm Sarah Rossiter, and I have a uh, website where I show my art and do podcasting and helping people to connect to their inner creative source. And Brad is somebody who I just love working with and using his tools to tap, and it has really helped me to connect to. Um, kind of my creative fire. And I've noticed that there's a lot of things blocking me from doing that. And so I kind of daily check in with Brad's uh, tapping videos. And I just wanted to share that with my audience. And And um, Brad is a creative person himself as well. So I thought it'd be super cool if we could do some tapping together around money and creativity. So yeah. go for Absolutely. it, Brad. Absolutely, no, and, and I love that you uh, brought this up because yeah, I, I did start my career as a creative. I was a cartoonist, uh, didn't do a lot of that professionally, but I've been create, doing art all my life. And you're and, an actor. And then I, I, I'm a recovering and a, actor. And a, 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 a recovering clown or still? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it depends on how you define that. <laughs> I, I, retired the, uh, I retired the red nose, but the uh, the humor is, is still there. So yeah, before I got into this, I was a professional actor, toured the world. And when I got into doing this work, some of the first workshops I did were called Fearless Acting and I was working with actors. And I now have a course I, with my friend, Dina Tyler, who's a member of the Actress Studio. So she actually arranged it for me to be able to teach this tapping for Fearless Actors at the art uh, at the um the actor's studio in new york oh that's with, a big deal that's with cool. ellen burston there in the audience academy award winner ellen burston so that was uh pretty darn exciting yeah that sounds so, like kind of a full circle there yeah. <laughs> like you thought you were gonna just act froze up there wanna... That was like for emphasis. Yeah. <laughs> it's like that that great moment. And uh, for anyone who's ever seen, did you ever see the movie Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence? It's a no, brilliant, brilliant good. movie um, about a, a Japanese prisoner of war camp in World War II with uh, my favorite actor, Tom Conti, and my favorite musical artist, David Bowie. And there's this really crucial scene where uh, where Bowie comes up and takes the commander of the prison camp and kisses him on the cheek. And it goes into this sort of stilted slow motion. And it's like, wow, what a brilliant directorial choice. And I heard Bowie interviewed later. And he said, no, the, the film got jammed in the camera. <laughs> and then they were like, wow, that was cool. <laughs> it actually works. <laughs> so sometimes the most brilliant art comes as, a, as an accident. But yeah, I definitely, I, I definitely love because creative people are are my tribe of origin. I uh, I love working with folks on that. In terms of the money thing, especially because so many artists have this. There's this archetype of the struggling artist. You know, if you're not suffering, if you're not starving, if you're not barely making ends meet then, you know, you really haven't given yourself over to your art and you can't yeah, what really... is that? Yeah. Where does it's, that come from? It's I, nonsense, Sarah. That's what it is. It's it is total absolute nonsense. bonkers. This suffering narrative is like, it goes through every part of our life. I've been uncovering it lately and it just blows me away to the extent to which 
we believe in spirituality, we believe creativity, everything, even financial success that has to come out of some kind of suffering in order for it to be what authentic or but it's just a backwards notion that you have to come from that as opposed to abundant, positive thinking. Absolutely. And I'm not denying that a lot of great art comes from pain, but- Pain, pain exists. Yeah, as human <laughs> beings, you can be rich and experience pain. So you don't need to be poor in order to have the pain that you choose to have as material for your art. So, you can still be, there are plenty of examples of, you know, there obviously there's plenty of examples of artists who starved and there are plenty of examples of artists who did just fine. Thank you very much. <laughs> Pablo Picasso did not die penniless. <laughs> not everyone's a Picasso fan maybe, but um, there are, so there, there are plenty of people creating beautiful art, brilliant art. In, in you know in painting in film in movies in theater in uh, you know every different artistic medium in music there there are so many people who are doing just fine thank you even though they have money and so we can't say oh well you know that that art is no good because they're not really struggling so so let's let's do some tapping around that to get rid of this idea so what i'd like everyone to do is go ahead and close and your also eyes. oh go ahead okay i was just going to say think of all the great things we could do if we had more money you know i would have more time to make art uh if i could pay for more child care i would be able to donate money to charities if i was making more on my artwork um I would be able to support other artists and creative people with like a business such as yours. The more money you make, the more you can share and support and make the world a better place. So it's not a bad thing. A absolutely. I think we, we're programmed to think we shouldn't want money. You say that in your tapping for a million dollars video, you know, all these programs that I shouldn't want this money and then programs that I should want this money. So I'll let you take it from here. I just yeah. wanted to... <laughs> No, yeah, it's really, excellent points. really nuts. Out. Excellent points. The more abundance we have, the more opportunities we have, and more opportunities to share our gifts and talents, to share our art. And for anyone who's who's uh, joining us, and hello to everybody who's uh, who's joined us. Um, it's transformational. It's yeah. the, that is part of the transformation to be able to spread and use and and like you said, money just happens to be the currency we're we're using <laughs> yep it is and it, it's, it's okay to it's, use it it's just it's it's very hard to uh, operate in this world without it so you know so we need to just get over our um our resistance to it and allow ourselves that that greater abundance and the greater opportunities to share our gifts and talents please and thank you so what i'd like everyone to do is go ahead and close your eyes take a deep breath and let it go. And now just following your breath through your body. Just allow yourself to be aware of what's going on in there. Noticing what you're feeling physically and what you're feeling emotionally. And now allow your attention to go to the idea of money. Imagine making as much money as you'd like. And again, checking in with how you feel. Notice where the discomfort might come up. Notice what thoughts, beliefs, or memories might come up as to why you couldn't or shouldn't make more money. And then check again and say, notice what thoughts you might have about why you couldn't or shouldn't make money with your art. Because there may be a part of you says, oh, I'm, I'm fine making money as long as it's not my art or whatever other passion you might have. This idea of, well, I can make money if I'm doing work that I don't enjoy, or, you know, it's something that's some corporate job that I don't, that I, that I hate, but I can make plenty of money of that and then support myself as an artist, but I can't make money with my actual um, gifts. So allow yourself to be aware of those feelings. 
say, I shouldn't have more money. And rate that on a scale of zero to 10 as to how strong that belief feels. Notice where in your body you might feel it. And then take a deep breath, open your eyes, and let us clear that crap out, please and thank you. <laughs> so if you're not already familiar with EFT, if somehow you stumbled upon this, <laughs> and are uh, not familiar with uh, this tapping work, just with your uh, index and middle finger, just tap where I tap, and then repeat back the words that I say. Even though part of me believes I shouldn't have more money. I choose to love and accept myself anyway. Even though part of me believes I should not have more money. I choose to honor and accept myself anyway. Even though part of me believes I shouldn't have more money. In fact, it believes I shouldn't even want more money. Especially as an artist. I should only want to create art. Art for art's sake. And I should shun any financial benefits. Even though part of me believes I shouldn't have more money. I choose to deeply and completely love, honor, and accept myself. And maybe anyone else who's contributed to this belief. All this belief that I shouldn't have more money. All this belief that I shouldn't want more money. All this belief that I should be a starving artist. All this belief that an artist who's not starving isn't really an artist. And I've had artists that I admire say this. Maybe someone whose art that I really liked wasn't doing well financially and told me that that's how it's supposed to be. If you really wanna be an artist, you have to starve. I choose to be open to the possibility that that is absolute rubbish. It wasn't a lack of money that made that artist good. But maybe they bought into that. Because some mentor taught them that. I may come from a long line of crappy artistic mentoring. The creativity might have been good. The business advice was crap. Why shouldn't I make money doing what I love? If I'm sharing my art with people, why shouldn't I be paid for that? Why shouldn't I be paid well for that? Clearing all this old prejudice against making money as an artist. And what happens is that some artist buys into that and they don't, make, they don't make much money. 
And rather than realizing that they might be mistaken, they try to justify their lack by saying that's how it's supposed to be. Because if they're a starving artist, they're not gonna tell me that I don't have to starve. <laughs> and if I'm not starving, they're gonna be pissed off. So they'll tell me that I'm not really an artist. My artwork begs to differ. <laughs> My bank account doesn't determine whether I'm an artist or not. So I might as well let it be filled up. <laughs> Rich or poor, I'm an artist. I might as well be rich. And I'm clearing all these reasons why I couldn't or shouldn't. all these messages that I've gotten about why it's wrong to have more money, about why it's wrong to even want more money. Those are misunderstandings. And I could argue that there are artists who have sold out, who have sacrificed art in order to make more money. That's not necessary. That was somebody dealing with misunderstandings. I can be true to my art and make plenty of money. It's not an either or situation. And I'm releasing these blocks. I'm releasing these fears. All these reasons why I couldn't or shouldn't have more money. All these reasons why I couldn't or shouldn't make money as an artist. or whatever it is that I love to do. Whatever it is that I'm called to do. Why would the creator give me these gifts and then insist I have to spend my time on something else and limit the amount of time I can do what I'm here to do? Doesn't make any sense. It's unfortunate that so many great artists have starved. It's a crime that Vincent van Gogh had so little money. But there are other artists who have made plenty of money and still do brilliant work. I'm open to the possibility that Vincent was so brilliant, he still would have created great art if he had been rich. It wasn't a lack of money that made him so good. It's not a lack of money that makes me so good. And with more money, I'd have so many more opportunities. I'd be able to do so much more good. I'd be able to share my work with more people. And my work makes a difference. 
I don't want to limit the difference I can make while I'm here. So I'm clearing these blocks and opening myself up to abundance in body, mind, and spirit. Take a deep breath. Close your eyes. And again, think about making the amount of money you'd like to make if you gave yourself permission to like the idea of having money. And uh, now notice what that feels like. Say, say again, it's wrong to have more money. It's wrong to have more money. And rate that again on a scale of zero to 10. And hopefully that has dropped way the heck down. So, and feel free to write comments if, mm -hmm. uh, about what you might've experienced. So Sarah, what was your experience of that? Oh boy, I got a 10 on my resistance level the first time around. <laughs> Good thing and, what's happened. <laughs> yeah, thank goodness. Who knew? Um, and then I got a three. Thank you, Brad. That was awesome. awesome. Yeah, it's like um, just unraveling the ball of knotted yarn. All these ideas and fears and programming. And it's like you don't even realize how much it's running you. And then when you kind of tap it out, it, does, it felt like it dissipated. Yeah. And there was less silliness there. It was more, oh, of course I'm abundant. Of course I'm, why, why wouldn't you want to make money on your creative work so you can share it with the world? Absolutely. In, in fact, I'll encourage folks, go ahead and you can keep tapping on the collarbone. You can be tapping through different points. I highly recommend tapping on a daily basis to be clearing stress out. Even if you're not aware of it, there's usually some ambient level of stress that gets in our way in different ways. So you know, be tapping on a daily basis, but especially while we're here to take this opportunity to be clearing stuff out. And yeah, and, and looking at, there's all kinds of subtle things that we pick up, different messages. I've, I've heard from like musicians who have said, oh yes, well, my teacher told me that if I'm not nervous before a performance, then I'm doing it wrong. But, but why? Because, you know, if you're playing an instrument, nerves are going to get in the way of your ability to finger properly and, and you're present. When you're giving any kind of performance, the more emotionally calm you are, the freer you are to use your instrument, to let the art flow through you. So what happens, though, is that teacher probably gets nervous when they're doing it and think, well, that must be the way to do it. So I'm gonna tell my students that they should be nervous and say, oh yes. And if you're not nervous, it means you don't really care. You know, you don't care about your audience enough to be nervous. And I'm like, no, I care so much about my audience that I wanna be as open a channel for creativity to flow through me as possible. Nerves are just getting in the way of me sharing my gift. Yeah. Uh, so the same, the same with the, the money stuff. How on earth does it benefit anybody? We cannot be poor enough to benefit anybody. And so, it, and, it, and, and, and like the, the, uh, the Van Gogh thing came up because it, absolute, my favorite artist. Um, and right up there with Michelangelo, right? <laughs> well, so my favorite painter, and as much as I love the Sistine Chapel, Michelangelo always said, I'm not a painter, I'm a sculptor. <laughs> so um, yes, I always have my, my David's all over the place. <laughs> I love but, it. Um, I see two or three behind you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, so yeah, have a couple of, of David sculpture, the picture, the, the creation hands. I have a giant poster of the creation hands over here. And, you know, what I, what I love about the, the creation hands is if you look, God's hand fingers pointing out firmly and Adam's hand is the fingers kind of limp. And if he put some more effort in, they would connect. <laughs> uh -huh. And that's how it is as human beings, you know, God, the divine source is reaching out to us. And we're kind of like, eh. <laughs> we're not quite there. We hold ourselves back. And Here. if we just allowed ourselves a little more freedom to put in a little bit more effort, that's when we really connect. 
Yeah. And we're, it's not because we're bad or stupid. We just have programming telling us that it's not safe. Yeah. You know, and it's like, what, what would be unsafe about making more money? What would be unsafe about making more money as an artist? And is, is it the fear that other artists who are not doing well will, uh, you know, will shun me because they think, oh, wow, well, you sold out. It's like, no, I'm creating the art that I want to make. The Whether societal it... judgment of that. Yeah. yeah. One thing you say a lot is, um, I'm afraid I can't handle it. Like as a thing that you tap on is like, you know, if I made that much money, what if I couldn't handle it? That's a really interesting point. Um, maybe you could talk a little bit about that. Cause yeah, absolutely. sometimes that's that right. comes up, like someone will say they want something that they're just about this one thing. Then it turns out they're actually afraid of actually getting that one thing. Cause they don't know what to do. They don't have, maybe they don't have a role model. They don't have an example of how you could live positively with that. And that's to me is like the number one of the number one fears is the fear, <laughs> yeah, is, is the fear that I wouldn't be able to handle it. And so we tell ourselves, so um, in the comments, uh, Milika was saying, it seems impossible uh, to reach for me. And yet, why would it be impossible when other people are doing it? Anything that's possible for other people is, is possible for you. But there's a part of us that says, I couldn't handle it. And so I'm going to come up with stories like it's impossible. I'm going to convince myself that it's not possible to have this, to do this, to be this, whatever it might be. We tell ourselves, I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. I'm not deserving. Be tapping. Those are lies. They're lies. You are not here by accident. You are not a mistake. You, you were deemed by the creator as absolutely worthy enough to be here. And in every single moment, with every breath you take, the universe is saying, yes, you're worthy and deserving of that. I inhale, I ask, the universe says, yes, you're worthy of that. I you're can breathing. Go out, yeah. Like, yeah. I can go out and look out at night and see as many stars as anybody else around, um, you know, provided we're standing in the same place with the same kind of light um, pollution. But <laughs> uh, so... So all of that stuff about not being good enough, not being worthy, it not being possible for us, part of us deep down inside knows it's not true. Otherwise, we wouldn't even be here. So for instance, Malika, you wouldn't even be here if you thought it was impossible. Why would you have bothered? There's a, all kinds of other places you could be right now, um, except that part of you knows it's possible and I just need to clear some things away. And that one of the main things is I couldn't handle it. I couldn't handle having the money because I, I've, you know, blown it with money in the past. And so I, I'm afraid of if I have more, I'll blow more. Uh, I may be afraid also, of the criticism. I can't handle the criticism that, uh, that I'll get if I have it. And also so our parents, right? Like a lot of times we get the huge. programming from ancestry that says, well, I didn't know how to handle it. So you can't know how to handle it. Right comes right. in the DNA. Many of us have a family coat of arms with a motto that says, we don't have money. <laughs> and so there's a thought of, I, my family couldn't handle it. And they'll be upset. And I couldn't handle, <clears throat> excuse me, I couldn't handle how they don't handle it. <laughs> so that's the thing is to to look at uh, what if pattern that doesn't really hurt anyone. Yeah. I'm sorry, you broke up there for a moment. Go for it. We have a delay. Oh. <laughs> the uh, okay, so uh, Lisa, trying to break my money. Tr <clears throat> excuse me. Trying to break my block that making art is too much fun. How Hi, dare Lisa. I make money off of doing what's fun? Lisa is actually a really great artist and um, she's going to be in the course. <laughs> Ooh. What, 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 Can what, I... course, what course is that, Sarah? <laughs> <laughs> Can I share? So yeah. Brad is going to be a guest teacher in a course that I'm sharing in October called Creativity and Consciousness. And we're going to work on these blocks, you know, how to be more abundant and creative as artists and welcome in more money. 
Um, yeah, Brad, you mentioned this idea of like, I should only work, I should do my day job and I should only get paid for something that's mind numbing and not my, or, you know, maybe socially acceptable, not my creative work. I think so many artists, well, out of necessity, we often have to have other jobs to pay for our, our creative time. Um, so I'm hoping anyways, in that course, um, to share ways to break that down and really help people to free their authentic voice and really move into their power. Yeah. And there's, there are so many beliefs about those things. We shouldn't make money. I had someone telling me years ago, you're helping people. You should just do that out of the kindness of your heart and make money another way. I, I should limit the amount of time that I can do this work helping people in the way that I can help people most. So, and I limit that time because I should go do another job that I hate in order to make the money to support. It's like, dude, uh, you got to tap on that. It's- Well, I also think a lot of people want to move, want to be successful as a creative artist, but we just yeah. don't always know how to bring in abundance. Yeah. So yeah. I've found that tapping is actually like 30 minutes a day is a great formula for bringing in abundance. Right. Because and, the ways are out giving there. giving yourself more energy and enthusiasm, because sometimes yeah. you're just so exhausted about it. Which is a brilliant way of stopping ourselves from creating a situation that we're afraid we couldn't handle. If I had more energy, I might put myself out there more and be more successful. Yeah. Oh, I better avoid that. Oh. But <laughs> the so great tired. thing about tapping is that you could just do it when you're feeling like you could be lying on the floor moaning and groaning and you could start tapping. Like you don't and have clearing to go, it out. You don't and have to even get on YouTube to do it. You could yeah. just channel Brad. <laughs> yeah. Clearing clearing out those reasons why you couldn't or shouldn't have the energy. Clearing out three. So the idea of, uh, you know, we don't know the ways to be successful. It's out there. Have, maybe you guys have heard of this thing called Google. <laughs> you can type in a question even before you finish it. It's probably going to fill it in because other people have asked that and you will find millions of answers. Like, how do I sell my artwork? And there are plenty of people who are selling artwork who, who will tell you how to do it and the ways are out there, we brilliantly stop ourselves from finding out how. Because self-sabotage is simply misguided self-love. That part of us that stops us from asking Google, how do I sell my paintings, <laughs> is brilliantly trying to keep me from having the money that I'm afraid I couldn't handle. Because, you know, my family coat of arms says we don't have money. And I can't dishonor. I'm supposed to honor my parents. I'm supposed to honor my mother and my father. How can I honor them if uh, if I'm making more money than they had? So, um, Laura, thank you. Uh, the class. I have a link up there. I'll put it in here too. Um, so the class is um, on my website. You go to sarahrossiter.com and then slash Brad, B-R-A-D. So S-A-R-A-H-R-O-S-S-I-T-E-R.com slash Brad. And you will see a lot of information. It's called Creativity and Consciousness. It's a 10 week course. And um, Brad will be supporting us in connecting more deeply to our creativity, not just about money, but also bringing in abundance. And also like, Brad, you were talking yesterday about your inner gold, that sort of that seed of unique expression that we each have yeah. um, is dying to come forward. And, you know, if we can release some of these blocks, we can speak so much more truthfully and honestly and really feel into, you know, the, the joy and the beauty that we're wanting to share with the world. I feel like each one of us has an awesome gift to share. Absolutely. And we hold ourselves back because of old programming, old fears about, you know, don't, don't go too far. Don't do this. You know, the greatest artists are, are those ones who, who push boundaries. They push the limits of what they were able to do. And so we're, you know, it's like, I want to, I want to paint with all these colors, but I should just use these three. 
you know, other people, <laughs> maybe too much paint. <laughs> and we, we stop ourselves creative, uh, creatively, not because we're bad or stupid, not because we're a bad artist, but because programming tells us that's too much. People won't understand. Or you can't have multiple talents. A lot of people say, I'm, I, I love painting, but that's just what I did when I was a kid. I'm, I'm not really an artist or, um, well, I love acting, but I never got a degree. So I'm not really, <laughs> there's these rules about uh, how we should be allowed. And, and it happens more, you know, culturally too, it can be harder. Like in Europe, you have to have all sorts of certifications to do things. And um, culturally, there's a long lineage of telling you who and what you can be. And I just say, go for it. You know, everyone has the right to express as my friend, Laura Powers says, like, we're all creators. The creator created us to be creators. Yes. And so, when we squelch that creative desire, it becomes very unpleasant. And so many of my problems have come from not being okay with doing my work. You know, I used to say to my family, like, well, mommy's cranky because I haven't been to the studio. <laughs> Go to the studio then, <laughs> or do some tapping on your way. Yeah. It's art therapy. You know, there's, it's, it is not healthy for us to stifle that creativity that is within us. And so many people say, I'm not an artist. I, I don't remember if it was, I think it was either Picasso or Salvador Dali who said, every child is an artist. The, the problem is having them remember, continue to remember that. Yeah, I think it was Picasso. Yeah, we're all artists. We have, you know, we have varying degrees of talents, but, and we come into this life with different sort of dharmas or purposes but we have each a creative ability could be and that know, can be translated into all kinds of different jobs yeah for me this doing the tapping work is is a work of art it's it's, it's create it i do it in a creative way so this is just my the the modality that i use um as the the art form that i use now I'm curious, Brad, I was thinking a lot about you as an actor while you were tapping for some reason. I was curious, how does, like, do, how do you, you know, reconcile acting with your work now? Or how does it feel like these two things have really, like, blossomed into this creative work that you do? Well, it definitely was you're really part good of, at it. Well, thank you. It, <laughs> like was, it was definitely part name. of my training for what I do now all the time that I spent as an actor, uh, you know, certainly when I, when I got on YouTube, I'd already spent a lot of time doing work on camera. So I was much more comfortable with it. I, uh, and I think of myself as an artist. So as I do the work, I'm more open to being creative with it. So I, I don't look at it as, Oh, well, I had one career and then I switched to another career. It's like, no, this was all part of um, you are. The, the training for this. Yeah. So, and it's, and it's great because it, it, it fulfills the actor inside of me, especially when I'm, I'm doing my first live, uh, live workshop in over a year and a half next week in, in Cleveland, Ohio. And uh, I, I miss having a live That's audience. That's right. Like that. Good luck with that. Thank you. I hope that all goes smoothly given the circumstances. Yes, I hope it all goes me too. Very I scheduled it I'm when so, all I the know numbers were dropping. <laughs> It's I like, know someone like, who's super excited to see you in person, you know, who bought a ticket, who's like, you know, it's, it means so much to people to have a, a sort of goal of like, okay, I finally get to get out and do this awesome thing. And it's been such a hard year, two years yeah, for people. Yeah, it's been challenging. You know, Although I have to say the challenge has been awesome for me personally. Like it's just been so challenging and it has caused me to reach totally new levels, spiritually, artistically, personally, like I am working through stuff faster than ever before, uh, seems to me a lesson about adversity and, you know, the human spirit. Well, necessity is the mother of invention. And a lot of things have been invented, you know, in, in all kinds of different ways, but it, within ourselves, we have come up with new ways to do things uh, it certainly pushed me to up my game in terms of reaching out to people and making this work available because there was a lot of stress that needed to be cleared. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. While, um, you know, 
there there have been things that we have grown we as a as a race have grown from because of this as as often happens with adversity everyone be tapping that doesn't mean we need to keep hanging on to adversity in order to keep growing <laughs> right 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 oh i need back. to struggle to yes. be a better artist no exactly. i'm just saying i learned a lot yes. thank goodness like we I'm grow from those struggles the experiences and yeah. i'm ready to have positive virus less experiences <laughs> We, we can grow and thrive even in the absence of struggle. Yeah. So, you know, we, we've considered you've had enough struggle already to be a brilliant artist. You don't have to have any more. Now, life is still going to happen. We deserve a break. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Life's going to happen. And that's why the, the hashtag life happens. Tapping helps. You know, we have ways of coping with it. We don't want to say, um, ooh, I could tap on this suffering I'm experiencing. No, no, I need to hang on to this suffering so I can create great art. I, mu I must not <laughs> tap. So don't be, yeah. don't be telling yourself, I can't use tapping because I need that suffering to create great art. You don't. Focus Your brilliance is inside of you. You yeah. were created brilliant, you know, and allow yourself to know that. Um, quick note about the the link to, to Sarah's course for everyone. Um, I believe that if they use that link, they are getting a discount. Three hundred dollars off, just for saying, just to use Brad's name, you get three hundred bucks off. Thank you for that. <laughs> so uh, you know, someone once said, "A penny saved is a penny earned." So that's uh, three hundred dollars saved is three hundred dollars earned. So you already uh, get to increase your abundance. How about that? And also, there's a, a lot of great teachers. There's uh, five other teachers in addition to tapping expert Brad Yates. I have creative entrepreneur Laura Michelle Powers, author Mark Gober, and singer-songwriter Marisa Eamon, and emotion code practitioner Rebecca Packard, and intuitive teacher Shelley Wasiki Frankie. So all of these teachers are a part of the course, and also myself. I'm an artist, and a spiritual teacher, I suppose that's my, <laughs> that's what I'm up to lately. And um, I feel like this course is going to create a really beautiful community of support to help people connect to their inner voice and become more creative, um, sort of create a space in which you can envision yourself doing your best work. And it, the 10 weeks, I feel like is a nice structure to work through some things. So Brad, I believe you'll be coming up then we'll you know work up to um some of our goals and it's just going to be a lovely group thank you so much brad for being a part of it i really am so honored and thanks oh, for today i'm honored to be part of it let's uh we have a few more minutes if you folks can hang out let's do one more tapping round what do you think i love so, it so everyone go ahead and close your eyes take a deep breath and along those idea, that idea of um, I shouldn't make money doing what's fun. <laughs> Get in touch with uh, what you're feeling inside and say, it's not right to make money doing what I love. Now, after that first round of tapping, maybe you're saying, that's crazy. But for whatever part of that might still be there, if there's any resistance still there, let's do some tapping. So go ahead and open your eyes again. Even though I shouldn't make money doing what I love, I choose to love and accept myself. Even though I shouldn't make money doing what I love, I choose to love and honor myself. Even though I shouldn't make money doing what I love. Money only comes in exchange for hard work. Painful work. If it's not unpleasant, I couldn't possibly get paid for it. And if I'm having fun, That should be its own reward. And I should make money elsewhere. 
And even though I shouldn't make money doing what I love, I choose to deeply and completely love, honor, and accept myself. And maybe anyone else who might be involved. All these reasons I shouldn't make more money. Especially doing something I love. It's so wrong to make money doing what I love. Who taught me that? And why on earth would that make any sense? It would seem to make much more sense for the universe. For me to make all my money doing stuff I love. <laughs> so that I spend most of my time in high vibe activities. It benefits the world in so many ways. And there's nothing wrong with having a day job. I love and honor, I love and honor myself for all the ways that I make ends meet. Because I'm the goose that lays the golden eggs. And that goose has to be fed. On the way to making money doing what I love. <laughs> and it's totally okay as well. If I make all the money I need doing what I love. And I'm clearing any resistance to that. I'm clearing any belief that it's not possible. Any belief that it's not possible for me. Why not? There are people making great money doing what they love. Why not me? And whatever reasons might be showing up, I choose to clear them out because they are based on misunderstandings. Clearing those out at a cellular level, clearing these lies out all the way back through my past. back through all the times in my life that I somehow got the message that it wasn't possible for me, that I didn't have what it takes, that it's wrong to be paid for something that's fun. It just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> It might have at a certain time because I felt I had to believe the person saying it. But were they really an expert on the subject? Or were they just justifying their situation? Trying to insist that their lack was the way it had to be. I choose to teach them a lesson. Have more fun and make more money. Clearing all this resistance. Clearing all these fears and doubts. Clearing those from every fiber in my being. Allowing myself to get excited about spending more time doing what I love. 
because that benefits the world. And it makes sense for me to get paid for that. My success benefits the world. My joy benefits the world. My love benefits the world. So I'm allowing myself to do what I love. And I'm allowing myself to be paid for that. And I can find out how to do so. <laughs> As I clear my resistance, the ways will show up. I'll remember to look on Google. Or I might just meet somebody who can give me ideas. There's no telling how it might show up. I'm giving myself the freedom to let it show up. I'm allowing myself to be open to these opportunities. I'm allowing myself to be open to the abundance. And I also choose to be excited about what this might do for my creativity. This fear of making more money at this may have been limiting my creativity. If I allowed myself to be better at this, I might make more money at it. Part of me says, we must not let that happen. So I stop myself from being my best. So as I clear my resistance to abundance, I might very well open the creative floodgates. And I can handle that. I'm allowing myself to trust that I can handle it. I've handled everything that's happened in my life so far. Maybe not always as gracefully as I would have liked. But I've handled everything that's shown up. The proof being that I'm still here. I can handle greater success. I can handle being successful while having fun. No need to feel guilty about that. I'm showing other people how to do it. My success benefits others. It benefits others if I'm enjoying myself in the process. So I'm giving myself the freedom to do that. And I am loving myself in the process. In body, mind, and spirit. And take a deep breath. Close your eyes and say, it's okay to have fun while making money. It's okay to have fun while making money. And hopefully that feels a whole lot better. Lather, rinse, repeat as necessary. It sure does. That's awesome, Brad. You're so good at this. I really appreciate your support. You know, it's like you're a great role model. <laughs> it's true. When you do your work, it helps others, for example. And uh, I have a lot of fun doing what I do. And I- uh, Yeah, fun is important. Get, get paid pretty well for it, so. <laughs> as you should. As I should, as we all should. Yeah. You know, there, the world is abundant. There's, 
we are meant to experience abundance. You know, it's, and it's allowing ourselves to be clear on the difference between experience and abundance and greed, which is comes from a place of fear. That comes from a place of, oh, I have to have more than other people. I need to prove something with the money or things like that. When, in, when it's fear-based, that's, that's not success. That's not fun. But when it's uh, genuinely living the life that you want to live, doing what you want to do, and <clears throat> excuse me, doing what you enjoy doing, that to me is, is success. Yeah, and you feel so much better when that flow is, when the tap opens and creativity can flow through you, you're like, ah, oh. I mean, it's like a nice glass of water, you know, it's, yeah. it's like refreshing and it just creates more and more abundance and more energy when, when you can um, just break through that fear it doesn't have to be hard it, it can actually be way easier than your mind is telling you yes to tap into creativity and, and to just start making and doing and, and all of a sudden you'll look back and say wow i did that that was great fun and it, and also you don't have to be attached to the one thing that you did when you were feeling creative you can make more that's the unlimited potential of creativity it really opens up yeah possibility yeah, yeah. And opens up your mind, opens your heart. Therefore, it opens other people's hearts and minds. It's very exponential, powerful practice. But if and you can't that's a great point. There, you just, that's a great point you just made. Uh, and folks, go ahead and keep tapping here. That that idea about um, opening the tap and more coming out. Because sometimes we might fear. Well, what if I'm a one-hit wonder? And if I use up all my creativity now, I'll run out. Yeah. Can't happen. Or, or try to make, like, as a painter, sometimes you get attached, like, oh, I have to make this one perfect painting and I'll make one, but then I'll never make one like it. And that's just not a helpful thought pattern. <laughs> yeah. Because there's you, more coming and we don't always know what it is. We don't know where the universe is guiding us. Sometimes what flows forth, like you said, when you do these, um, tapping scripts it just comes out of you and you know one line might sound great but the next line might be even more impactful just keep going yeah yeah there's always more where that came from and people who are one hit wonders they turned the tap off because they got scared fear yeah what a shame well Let's, yeah like, with compassion but yeah. you know we're even, you know, people that are, they think, oh, I'm 74. I can't, you know, be a rock star. I say, yeah. Yep. It's, uh, there, there's still so much. If you're still here, you're not done. <laughs> <laughs> well said. <laughs> so, all right. Well, Sarah, thank you so much for inviting me to be part of your course and for uh in i mean on the podcast and, and having the um you know uh suggesting doing this live tapping i hope that folks have found it very beneficial yeah and if and, it's okay uh, i can i'll share this on the podcast too and i know you have a youtube channel and i have a youtube channel so we can share the recording yep. later so just for everyone my podcast is called the psychic artist podcast you can find it on your favorite podcasting platform. And Brad Yates was also on uh, an earlier episode talking about creativity. So we will continue the conversation. And uh, folks, check out the uh, check out Sarah's course. I'll put that in the links. Oops. And this has been really awesome. I I love um, supporting creative people because I feel like. That's one of the things that is most powerful right now, given everything that's happening in our world, um, for people to become more in tune with their own intuition and creativity is, is going to be really powerful and, and supportive and help everyone connect more deeply. Yeah. And that benefits the world. So thank yeah. you for doing that. Yeah. And always Brad ends every email with be magnificent. Be magnificent. My favorite. Thank you. Because you are.
Yeah, I used to, a long time ago, I used to sign my letters, be well. And then I thought, well, I want more for people. I want them to be more than just uh, well. <laughs> Yeah, it's a great message. Every time I read it, I'm like, yeah, why didn't I? Th yeah, of course, you're right. It's very truthful. So. All right, thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you everyone who joined us. You guys are awesome. Yeah, and, thank you uh, for all the comments. And hopefully we'll, uh, hopefully you, a lot of you are gonna you join me for- Do you post the replay uh, here or it just yeah, shows up automatically? Yeah, okay. the replay will be here on, on my Facebook page and uh, get Yay. it up on YouTube as well. Okay. And see. I'm just going to tap. <laughs> Tapping on saying goodbye to Brad. We don't.